Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IS. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment today we are going to discuss about the power tussle between the elected assembly of Union Territory of Delhi and Lieutenant Governor. This topic is important from the perspective of prelims and also from the perspective of GS Main's paper too. So let's begin with the topics of discussion that we are going to look at. First of all, we have always talked about Y News. Then we will talk about Article 239AA of the Indian Constitution. We will also discuss about the Government of National Capital Territory of Delhi Amendment Bill 2021. We will then discuss about the reasons that have propelled for the Ministry of Home Affairs to move such a bill in the Lok Sabha. Then we will discuss about the previous judgments of the Supreme Court with respect to actually harmonizing the power tussle or struggle between the Lieutenant Governor and the Elected Assembly of Delhi. We will discuss about the way forward and in the last of the segment, I am going to ask you a mains based question for answer writing practice. So let's begin with wine news. Now, the Ministry of Home Affairs has on Monday moved a bill in the Lok Sabha to define what government with respect to the Union Territory of Delhi means. It says the government the word government here means the lieutenant governor and he or she should give proper time and an opportunity to make his views clear about any decision that is being taken by the elected legislative assembly of Delhi. Now, here, first of all, we need to understand what is Article 239 AA of the Indian Constitution. If we talk about Delhi, the Legislative Assembly of Delhi or the Union Territory of Assembly came into being in the year 1991 by the 69th Amendment Act and it provided for a Legislative Assembly of Delhi and Delhi being a Union Territory is strategically extremely important for the Government of India. It serves as our national capital. And thus, there is a lot of struggle and has been pointed out by various governments when different governments exist in the state and in the center if we talk about the power and the executive authority with respect to Delhi. So, it says it provided legislative assembly and also a council of ministers responsible to such assembly with appropriate powers to deal with the matters of concern to the common man and hence the name was given National Capital Region of Delhi by this amendment 69th amendment act the name of National Capital Region of Delhi came into being and if we talk about what actually falls under the domain of the center or the central government it's public order police and land apart from this the state government has free hand with respect to making decision or passing a legislation in any other category. So, moving on, it also says that for offences against laws, jurisdiction and powers of courts, except Supreme Court, and fees, that is, except court fees, so far as they relate to public order, police and land, in the National Capital Territory of Delhi, central government would have the powers to make laws. It also gives the information about the Lieutenant Governor, and the Council of Ministers, now if we talk about the Council of Ministers headed by the CM, they are elected to aid and advise the Lieutenant Governor in the exercise of his functions in relations to matters with respect to which the Legislative Assembly has powers to make law. Here, the both the offices, the CM's office and the Lieutenant Governor's office, this basically warns a harmony. Harmony in the sense that day-to-day -day administration could be run without any kind of hassle. And here, the lieutenant governor should always and try to always make decision with the help of the aid and advice of the council of ministers because they are elected by the people. So, the lieutenant governor should keep in mind that people are the ultimate power holders. And then, in relation to matter with respect to which the Legislative Assembly has the powers. That means, except for public order, law, and uh, public order, police, and land. Right? Moving on, 
Therefore, we have already discussed about the exclusivity of uh, the central government in the office in the cases of public order police and land. Lieutenant governor would not need aid and advice from the council of ministers. So, apart from the three categories, the lieutenant governor has all the discretion what to act, how to act, what is the decision to be made. Apart from this, he could act on the aid and advice of the Council of Ministers. Also, in the case of difference of opinion between the Lieutenant Governor and the Council of Ministers, the Lieutenant Governor shall refer it to the President for decision and act according to the decision given thereon by the President. Under Article 239, AA, Clause 4. This clause is particularly very contested because in the previous years it was seen day to day matters of not so significance were being talked about were talked about with the parliament or the president that was creating a barrier of communication between the council of ministers of delhi and the lieutenant governor so now here we will we will discuss about this particular bill which has come into being the Government of National Capital Territory of Delhi Amendment Bill 2021. It seeks to amend few clauses such as few sections such as 21, 24, 33 and 44 of the 1991 Act. Keep that in mind. Okay, I am writing the name here. The Government of National Capital Territory of Delhi Amendment Bill 2021. There could be a prelims question on this or even a mains question on this. So, if we talk about section 21, it section 21 should be amendment amended by the bill and clarify the expression government. Now, the Ministry of Home Affairs has said that here the word government actually means the lieutenant governor. The lieutenant governor in case of the Union Territory of Delhi is the government and he should be given proper opportunity under Article 239AA Clause 4 to make a discretion or make a discretionary decision on what matters need to be contacted to the President or the Parliament. This is what the bill wants to say, wants to amend. And under Article or Section 24 of the Article 239AA, the LG will not assent any bill passed by the Delhi Assembly that covers any of the matters which fall outside the purview of the powers conferred on the Legislative Assembly. In simple words, if the elected Legislative Assembly of Delhi wants to legislate or make a law on any matter other than the state list or the concurrence list, the lieutenant governor will not accept it, will not give assent to the bill under section 24. Section 33 it says that this act that empowered the Delhi Assembly to make rules to conduct its business by inserting the clause that it shall not be inconsistent with the rules of procedure and conduct of the business in the house of people. So here it is trying to say that the Legislative Assembly will not make any law which gives it the power or its committees the power to administer the day-to-day -day business. This is what this bill wants to do, right? So, administration is actually a matter of concern for both the central government here, the union government and the state government. And section 44 of the 1991 Act deals with the conduct of the business. Now, under this section, the bill says that there is no time bound, there is not a time bound when it comes to the lieutenant governor giving any sort of assent when it comes to the day-to-day -day business, the day-to-day -day conduct of the business. So, we need to define or give our time bound for that as well. So, these are the different sections. Now, the reasons. The Ministry of Home Affairs or the Union Government has cited the Supreme Court's judgment of 2018 and 2019. The 2018 
case if we talk about national capital territory of delhi versus union of india 2018 under this case we will discuss that case as well under this case the supreme court said that we need to harmonize or make or make assure that the conduct of the day to day administration is not hampered because of little ego struggles when it comes to day to day administration and we will discuss more provisions related to it in future first was harmony this was the ministry this was what the union government wants to say secondly define the responsibilities of the elected government and the lieutenant governor because if both these sections will know what their powers are what their duties are how they are responsible to the state then only they can act individually dedicatedly and also in harmony with each other right so now if we talk about the judgment the 2018 judgment it was explicitly made clear by the supreme court that the lieutenant governor is bound by the aid and advice of the elected delhi government this was a judgment of 2018 and if we talk about it kindly look here it said about the status of delhi under the constitution as article 239 clause 1 deals with it there is actually a tussle between article 239 and 239 double a with respect to delhi article 239 says that the lieutenant governor must work independently of the council of ministers but 239 double a says that the council of ministers is responsible to the legislative assembly and how to bring a harmony between these two articles is a matter of concern here all right so if we talk about the status of delhi under the constitution it is governed by 239 clause 1 now the supreme court said that all right parliament can make laws with respect to the constituents of the state list as well as the concurrent list but when it comes to the executive authority the state government or the elected legislative assembly will have all the powers when it comes to execution if we talk about articles or constituents other than uh, public order land and police so apart from these the central government will have no executive authority only legislative authority this was the first thing supreme court the supreme court said the lieutenant governor should act in accordance with the aid and advice of the council of ministers this was definitely said and made clear by the supreme court then comes lieutenant governor cannot refer every matter to the parliament right to the president beg your pardon because under article 239 double a clause 4 it was said that the lieutenant governor can talk about or can contact any matter to the president but the supreme court said that we cannot take every matter to the president because that will create hassle that will create a hamper when it comes to day to day administrative activities and then limited references to be made to the president matters that are constitutionally very significant should be contacted to the president this was said by the supreme court in the judgment of 2018 and because the lieutenant governor and the council of ministers should keep in mind certain terms such as collaborative federalism constitutional morality constitutional balance and governance that is why it is very important that they should work in harmony right and there were certain unresolved areas in the judgment which were talked about in the judgment of 2019 and such as first was the overlapping areas so if we talk about public order the word public order in itself is a very wide connotation it consists of many 
smaller, maybe less significant, but day-to-day -day administration comes under this, comes under the aegis of public order. So that is why overlapping authorities exist between the lieutenant governor and the elected assembly. That causes problems. Then the second one was there is no clarity on the article 239 AA clause 4. What are the matters which need to be contacted and need, need to be intimidated to the president is very subjective in nature and it depends on the opinion of the lieutenant governor. So there is not a defined analogy about the different matters which should be treated as any man, right? Then comes open-ended terminologies. I definitely told you certain term terminologies such as collaborative federalism as well as constitutional governance and morality. What are these? It is very subjective in nature. Until and unless it is defined in a proper manner and is not open to interpretation, problems will persist. Then there were certain unresolved areas that were given to a division bench of the Supreme Court in the year 2019. So difference of opinion existed between the control about the control of service in the national capital. Now Justice Sikri, he said that apart from the secretaries of different departments, if we talk about Delhi, Antman, Nicobar, civil services, Delhi, Antman, Nicobar, police services, Lieutenant Governor shall shall be given a forwarded report by the Council of Ministers. But Justice Bhushan, he deferred. He was of a different opinion that Council of Ministers have no say when it comes to service in the Union Territory of Delhi. Then it was decided that we will refer this particular section to a larger bench. Then comes exclusion of jurisdiction of the anti-corruption branch of the Delhi government to investigate officers of central government. Here, the bench said that the Council of Ministers or the elected Legislative Assembly of Delhi has no right at all to establish anti-corruption branch. It's not under the authority of the Delhi government. But and it also said that the anti-corruption branch cannot try officers who belong to the central government because for that they have CBI. Also, if we talk about exclusive authority of the lieutenant governor and Delhi government, they have no powers in this regard. In which regard? In the last one, anti-corruption branch. Power to set up commission of inquiry. If we talk about this particular provision, it was said that the Delhi government cannot have a, do, do not have a power to set up commission of inquiry. They also said that the power to appoint the special public prosecutor, the lieutenant governor, has to do so with the aid and advice of the council of ministers. So these were the different judgments. What is the way forward here? The way forward is, of course, have a defined set of authority, have a defined set of responsibility, duty, power, in order to make the day-to-day -day administration smooth. Until and unless there is no, even if we talk about not separating them, but we can plug the gaps. That is what needs to be done right now. And also, the government of India shall think about incorporating the Washington DC model. Washington DC model means there is a balance of power when it comes to the US, the federal government between the federal government and Washington government. So strategically significant assets or strategically significant sectors are under the federal government and other than that are under Washington. So if we talk about the concept of the uh, context of India, we can definitely see that strategically significant assets can be under the union government and other than that, the state government, right? So let's move on to our means-based question now. Can we pay attention? Examine and compare the role of governor and lieutenant governor in states 
and the union territories respectively also bring out the significance and concerns related to these posts in a federal polity. You have to write in 250 words. So, here you can also cite the example of Puducherry along with Delhi. That will enrich your answer more. So, that's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated and thank you so much for watching.